Hey friends, it's Ruben with Hi-Fi MIDI. In this video, I'll be demoing and reviewing Apple Sound's newest instrument, Ample China QD Elegant Wind, abbreviated as ACQD. It's their latest and most significant venture away from stringed instruments and deeper into the enchanting world of traditional Chinese instruments. I'll be going over new features like endless articulation, intelligent legato, creative mirroring, flexible vibrato system, and modifiable wind effects. The cutie is a Chinese flute made out of bamboo. It's a type of DZ, which is the more common name for the instrument. You've probably heard it in many Chinese films or music recordings. I'm going to go through the sounds and new features and then give you my thoughts on it as a virtual musician. But first, I'm going to play around with it a bit. That got a little spooky at the end. <laughs> the first time I played this, I was so blown away at the, not only the incredible sound quality that I heard, but the number of articulations this thing has. It's massive and I can't wait to talk about it. This instrument has a very shrill but distinctive sound, which I can compare to an Irish tin whistle, but with more resonance and more expressive capabilities. But the first thing I noticed visually when opening it up in an instance of ACQD is the beautiful and elegant interface with the instrument in the foreground, the Chinese scenic art in the background, and a modern and familiar looking interface. If you've used their products before or have seen my Apple Sound reviews. The second thing I noticed was QD's massive amount of articulations. Apple Sound's other libraries have some commonly used articulations and maybe a couple of unique ones that distinguish them from similar virtual instruments. But Ample Sound gave this tiny instrument lots of them. Some key switches even containing more than one articulation. I'll try to go through all of them quickly, but not too quickly. I want you to have a moment to appreciate them. Ample Sound has divided their articulations into three groups and has organized them by octave and color. The blue keys are called the head group, which refers to the part of the instrument used to create these grace notes. As you move from left to right on the keys, the number of grace notes increases with ascending and descending articulations paired side by side. Let's hear them. C0 is sustain. By the way, you can control dynamics with your expression wheel. I'm using the touch strip for that, or you can use a control pedal. You can assign expression to any fader or knob just by simply right clicking on it and assigning the fader or knob. Let's go on, there's single tonguing. At a lower velocity, it's double tugging. D0 is grace up. D sharp zero is grace down. E0 is pentatonic up. F is pentatonic down. Ripple. Short trembling. Medium trembling. This is velocity dependent. Scattering up. It's like a glissando. And scattering down. The yellow keys are called the body group. 
Although these articulations can be made at the head of the instrument, they differ from the head group in that you can switch between them seamlessly and continuously. I'll play through them individually and then switch between them. Expression gives variation in dynamic and vibrato. And you can keep pressing it over and over and hearing that swell, hearing that vibrato change. Next is vibrato. This is velocity sensitive. Variable vibrato changes the speed of the vibrato. The one is trill. And low velocity triggers variable trill. D sharp one is flutter. Which is done with the tongue. And there's scattering flutter. Which combines the glissando and the flutter. Very cool. E1 triggers a vibrato marking or marking depending on your velocity. Marking, I would I would call it a mordant. That's what we call it in uh, music theory. And layering, that's also a mordant. Mordant is when you play a note and then quickly go to the neighboring note and then back. Then vibrato slide up. Lower velocity is slide up. Same with the next one, slide down. Then full slide. This one is a velocity sensitive as well. Slide out, upwards. Now that upwards note is really short compared to the downward note. Sounds kind of mopey and sad. The red keys are the special effects. C2 triggers performance phrases by renowned Dizzy player Zhao Kui Ding. He also played all the articulation samples that you're hearing in this virtual instrument. Let's listen to some of them. By the way, before I forget, the playing range for this instrument goes from G2 all the way to E6. You know what? I'm, I'm pretty sure someone's cutting onions in the studio. Um, yeah, that's my theory. That is absolutely stunning, gorgeous. And uh, as you can hear, there's so many sounds you can get out of this instrument. D2 is an interesting effect called mirror. Essentially what it does is it takes a sample you play before, any articulation or any note that you play before, and it creates a reverse copy of that, but it does it in such a way that it sounds natural. I think the purpose of it is to give you more options for musical expression and creativity.
So everything I'm playing is just reversing it. Sometimes you can hear it, you can tell just a little bit, but most of the time I would say it sounds really smooth and natural. I'm looking forward to seeing how this develops in future instruments and in this instrument. This instrument has two different mic settings, mid-side one and mid-side two, which uses two microphones and creates a stereo image. Here's the mixer for those microphones, then panning, and then you have different keys. And the purpose of this is that it changes the notes in the grace notes or the pentatonic or any grace note group that has multiple notes. Then your expression and then your sound effects volumes, like effects, release, breath, the sound of the person breathing. I don't know if you even noticed that. When I was playing, you could hear an automatic breath sound, which is pretty cool. And then there's the wind noise, wind sound gain. This, uh, this is the sound of the air hitting across the blowholes. I don't know if you could hear that. You could almost hear a faint octave below the note, the sound of a pitched air. As well as this little crackling sound. This instrument has two plane modes, instrument mode and keyboard mode. Right now it's in instrument mode, which makes it monophonic and it limits the tone to about eight seconds before it runs out of breath. Keyboard mode lets you play many notes at the same time. I don't like the sound of it because this instrument is so detailed and it has such a shrill sound that when you layer them together, it's a little harsh and it sounds like a harmonica. Um, and it sounds kind of funny to me. It's very reedy. So I'm going to keep it in instrument mode. This is random articulation. This is pretty neat. What it does is that it changes the articulation every time you lift your finger off the key. I think that's a pretty cool function. It's a good way to give you some ideas on what kind of articulations you want to program. I prefer having total control though. <laughs> then there's legato and slide legato mode, which you can switch here. Right now it starts in legato mode, which I'll explain to you. This is kind of complicated, so I created a little MIDI track. I'm going to read this to you. It says in legato mode, the mode triggers straight legato when the note duration is shorter than legato time, which can be adjusted in the settings. So what this means is that if you go to settings and set your legato time, right now it's at 200 milliseconds, but I'm gonna set it to 500 milliseconds just for demonstration purposes and so it's easier to understand. So my legato time is half a second. Going back to this, it says, if my first note is shorter than half a second, which this is, then it's going to trigger Straight legato. On the next one, if my first note is longer than legato time, so it's if it's longer than half a second, and the dynamic is 126 to 127, it's going to trigger layering legato. And, sorry, I forgot to mention, that's if it's going up. On the next one, if it's going down and the dynamic is between 126 and 127, it's going to trigger a ripple. <laughs> 96 to 125 is grace legato. <laughs> 32 to 96 triggers straight legato. And 16 to 31 triggers 
soft legato. That took me a long time to understand. It's pretty complex, but it gives you a lot of options for legato. Next slide mode says that when playing a major second or minor third, a velocity of 16 to 31 triggers slide legato one. One to 15 triggers slide legato two, which is a little bit longer. I think the legato sounds a little bit harsh on that one. Well, that's pretty cool. And finally, you have sample loop. When you turn it on, it loops the sample at a certain point where it sounds natural, you can't really tell. That way you can play longer than the restricted time of eight seconds. Down here, you have more effects. This one is a breath sound, F5. This is pretty cool. Listen to this. I love hearing the sound of someone breathing when they're playing an instrument. F sharp is a tube tap. And then the next three are called shocking. That is pretty shocking. <laughs> then the next two are called vibrato effect. I'm not sure why they're called vibrato effect because the technique is not vibrato. It's more of a, a, of a plain style. It's more like a glissando or arpeggio with trill at the end. C6 and C sharp 6 are bird 1 and bird 2. These are really cool. It's awesome. The next thing I want to talk about is the pitch bend system. Ample Sound has a new system that moves not only the fundamental but the harmonics of the pitch in such a way where it sounds more natural than their previous libraries. Let me show you. Even their pitch bend system is better. I can't wait for them to use this on their guitars. They really need them. <laughs> and then the sustain pedal is, does something cool. It engages double legato mode, which without it, if I play a D going down to B, but I hold the D, when I let go of B, it cuts off. When I hold the sustain pedal and do the same thing, it's gonna revert back to D. This is great for trills. I'm not gonna lie. It took me a few days to finally get a decent understanding of this instrument. There are so many hidden elements to its use that make it more expressive and realistic that you have to read the manual to find them out. But as far as getting a great sound and playability out of the box, it's simple enough to understand. I think Ample Sound did a great job turning samples into an instrument. I'm not familiar with this specific instrument, but I'm very familiar with this type of instrument. And I can tell a lot of thought was put into each part. 
And Apple Sound says that although it's, it is release ready, there are still ideas they want to implement to make it better. The only things I would change or improve upon are the names of the playing techniques. It would make it easier to know what it's going to sound like if the techniques were named using classical terminology. Otherwise, they hit it out of the park with the customization options, playability, and sound quality. Before I go, I want to share that Apple Sound has allowed me to give three copies of this away. It does require an iLock, which is about 25 to 40 bucks, depending on where you live. I don't know exactly how or when I'm going to do it, but I'm going to announce the giveaway soon. Friends, if you like this review, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe for more videos, leave a comment below, share my video, and take care. I'll see you next time.